if you've been you know, trying to figure out the matching Eddings question type in the IELTS reading, you'd probably notice that it is one tough part. And for many people, that's what it is. Many people struggle with the matching Eddings because they just can't figure out how to quickly find the answer to this part of the reading passage, okay? So you find that you have something like this in a box, and then you have this section A to F, you know, you have, this is what it looks like. You would always see a box like this, and then you have this list. Okay, so this is for section three of the reading tests. And then um, today I'm going to show you how to answer matching Eddings questions. All right, I'm going to show you how to answer this type of questions in the IELTS reading. I'll give you practical steps. You would watch me read and understand these passages. That's these paragraphs, and then choose the appropriate Eddings yourself. Okay, so um, I'm sure this is one that you would enjoy. Now, I would love you to stay with me. And, you know, I promise that you'd have a great time learning all that you should learn. My name is Adeni Kebabalola, and I'm the brain behind IELTS with AB. I'll also be teaching you all that you need to learn in today's video. Every week, I release a new video to help you prepare for the IELTS test. And of course, I want you to pass at your convenience. I want it to be easy for you. So this channel is dedicated to every person who is interested in working or studying abroad, especially in countries where English is the you know, more or less native language in that sense. And this is, um, you know, mainly Canada, the US, the UK, New Zealand, and Australia. So if you're not subscribed to my channel, please make sure you click the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so that when I have a new video, you will be aware, you will get informed, all right? So the IELTS reading has three sections, section one, section two, section three, and many times, you know, you have the matching Eddings questions in section three where you have the longest passage. So let me show you the passage. Let's scroll down. Can you see? You can see A, B, you can see C, D, E, F, okay? And then you have multiple choice questions at the end, but our focus from this video is matching Eddings. So let me zoom it a little closer. Now look at the instruction, okay? It says, Read the text on pages 47 and 48 and answer questions 28 to 40. Now we're starting with questions 28 to 33. And then you know that in the reading test, there are 14 different types of you know, questions, reading questions. And the two most confusing for many people are the matching eddings and then true false not given. But I already did a video on true false not given. So if you have not seen that, I will provide the link to it in my description box so that you can watch that video on true false not given. But right now, today, I'm going to show you how to answer matching Eddings questions and get band nine in your reading test because it is possible. It is possible. At the end of this video, you would have learned how to answer matching Eddings questions without getting confused, without failing any questions, without, you know, you would feel sure and certain that your answers are correct and you did not do any mismatch. Okay, so let's get started. Now, this is what you have in this box. So the first step, I always tell people that there are steps to this thing, all right? And, you know, there's, there's, this, there's a way you should go with it. So the first step is for you to look at the Eddings. What can you see here? You can see seven Roman figures. You can see items, right? You can see this item. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, okay? So that's one thing you want to. You want to look at how many items you have in the box. So step one is to look at the items in the box, okay? Now, the second thing you should do is to look at how many things you've been given here. How many questions are you looking for, right? How many questions are you looking for? So let's look at it. We have section A, section B, section C, section D, section E, and section F. So this is six. We are looking for the answer to six questions. But how many things do we have in the box? We have seven. Right? So that means that we have an additional adding that we do not need. And that's the way it works. You would always have one more adding that you do not need. Okay? Now, how do you, um, you know, how do you deal with that? How do you figure out the one you do not need? 
tell you the truth. It's not about, um, you know, picking them one by one and saying, okay, I want to go and look for the one that is not there in the passage. No, you need to do the third thing, okay? Go and look at the passage. That's the passage. Look at the paragraphs. So let's go down. We can see A. Of course, we're not reading yet. We'll come to that. But we can see this. We see the title, Preventing the Theft of Turtle Eggs. Conservationists and law enforcement have struggled to prevent wildlife trafficking. But could some plastic eggs and GPS trackers change the game? Okay, so they are talking about preventing wildlife trafficking. More or less, some people are stealing turtle eggs. Okay, so they want to see if they can use plastic eggs, maybe fake eggs, and then GPS trackers. Okay, so you can see A, you can see B. Let's go down. We can see C and then D and then E and S. Okay, so you know you know what the paragraphs look like, right? Now, because you have not read, you just want to prepare your mind to understand what is in this box. So that is when you do the fourth thing. Number four, the fourth tip for you is to read everything in the box and then try to explain them to yourself. Ask yourself, okay, what is this saying? What could this be saying? What is what is this you know likely to mean? So let's do that very quickly. Developing an item that appears true to life. When you read something like that, what, what, what comes to your mind? Developing. Okay, they are creating something. They are bringing something into existence. And then an item that appears true to life. Okay, so they're going to make something that is not real. Can you notice that I'm changing words? I'm using synonyms to change words. That thing is not real, but it looks real. Okay, true to life. It looks real. So we're going to, for this Roma Fever 1, we need to find a paragraph where they talked about how they made something or the process of making something that looked real but was actually not real. Did you get what I did? I broke down that Roma figure one. That's why I tell people that when you see section three and there's matching editing, you know, there, just dedicate 25 minutes to that par um, passage, that section, because you want to have enough time to understand the, the passages, the paragraph rather the paragraphs so that you can pick the correct answer. Because for matching eddings, I have not been able to do skimming and scanning and getting the answers. You need to read. It's like giving a passage and being told to summarize it and choose the best heading or best title. If you don't know what the passage is saying, how do you pick the title? So you have to read the paragraphs one by one. But before you even go down to that, come here and understand what is in here. So the fourth thing we are doing right now is that we are trying to understand each heading by changing the words and explaining it better to ourselves. So my figure two says, extending the project to other endangered species. Extending, it means you are making something open. You are opening up so that it can cover more people. The project, okay, so they are probably working on something. So other, and other endangered species, that means there are other species that are also in danger that are probably suffering the same problem. And so they decided to take care of those um, species as well. It means that they are doing something that would not just be limited to some species, but we extend, would reach, would cover more species. More And species, of course, are like varieties of an animal, if I can use it like that, okay? So let's continue. Roman figure three says, a short but intensive investigation with longer term follow-up. Hmm. Short means, it is limited in time. Intensive means it is thorough. It is, they did a very good job. Investigation, they're trying to find out something. With longer term follower, it means that it is limited in time, but they'll be able to use it to get results for a long time, or they'll continue to follow that process or whatever it is that they have created. So it is limited in time, but it is thorough, and it will be, it will be followed through. It will be, it will be monitored. Okay, let me use that. It will be monitored for a long time. So we need to find a paragraph where that was talked about. Now let's look at Roman figure four. Problems facing sea turtles at a global level. Problems, problems can be the things they suffer from or the challenges they have or the difficulties that they experience. And then facing sea turtles. So this is what these animals experience at a global level. It means that there are problems that they experience all over the world, not just in one country, not just in one region, but everywhere. It's like saying something that mothers all over the world experience, okay? So in this case, it's like a universal problem, a universal, and this is not one because it says problems. So there could be several difficulties that these sea turtles have all over the world, okay? Roman figure five says collection of eggs and their possible onward routes. Okay, so it means we're going to find a paragraph that talks about how eggs are collected, 
and the likely places that they go to after, okay? After is onward, places, roots, possible, likely, okay? How eggs are collected, the process of these eggs being collected and the likely places that they go to. Do you see that um, we're spending time to understand this? I'm pausing to explain it to you because we're doing it together. But if you were doing it on your own, you would just use your pencil to underline words like developing, extending, you know, problems at the global world. You just underline some words like this collection, okay? Possible onward words. Those are words you would underline because they will be explained in the paragraphs where you will find your answers. They will be broken down. They will be, you will see a, an explanation or a description of the contents. Yeah, okay? Intensive and large-scale poaching in one location. Intensive, it means it is thorough. It is, it is a, you know, they did a, a, a job that had depth. They focused on it closely. Large-scale poaching in one location. So it means that they covered um, large-scale. Now it means it, it was a massive thing. It was a big thing. So something that extended to several things in one place. Now, I'm not going to tell you I know the meaning of poaching right now. I don't know the meaning of that. Okay? So don't feel bad if you don't know the meaning of certain words when you see them. I don't know what poaching means. Okay? But I'm going to definitely find that word in the passage when I read. So just focus on the things you understand. It's not, it's not, it's not bad to not get everything. I don't know what poaching is. And you might find words like that. But just tell yourself, okay, they're going to do something that would cover a large or a, a broad angle or a broad, to go a long extent or a wide, um, to have a wide coverage, we can see some in one place. Can you see this one location? In one place. And then the final one says, why catching the poachers may not solve the problem? Okay, so it looks like poachers would probably mean those who are going to steal something, right? Poachings, like you go to pick something. So maybe that's what it means, okay? Why catching the poachers? I think I'm just going to get the meaning and add it to my description in case there's somebody else that needs to find out what that means. Or let me just check my Miriam Webster dictionary as we speak, because when you are practicing, you should be able to consult and get answers. You, of course, would not be able to do this in the exam, but when you are training, when you are still in your IELTS preparation, then you know you can do this. You can find out what you need to know. Okay, it means the relevant meaning is to trespass for the purpose of stealing game. So it means that they are stealing. They, they invade a place and they steal something. So this is, it says to trespass for the purpose of stealing game. So those who are actually stealing. So it means that these people are deliberate and they steal a lot. They do a massive stealing, if there's anything like that, in one place. So let's cover this final one. It says, why catching the poachers may not solve the problem. It means there's going to be a paragraph that will give us reasons because it says why. That's why when you see a heading that says how something something is done, you're going to find a description of a process. Well, in this case, it says why catching. So it means we're going to find a paragraph that will give us reasons why it's not just enough to catch these trespassers, but you will find that there's a limitation to catching them. And then catching them does not solve the problem. It means that there's something more that should be done, not just catching the poachers. Now that you understand the headings, let's now go and read the paragraphs and get the answers. Let me tell you something. Once you've been able to read the headings and understand them, you've been able to underline some words and all of that. When you go into the paragraphs, you will easily see the paragraph that looks like the heading that you have read. And you don't even start, have to start from my figure one. You, can, you could find the answer for this one first, or the, the answer for my figure three first. But of course, we're going to start with Roman figure um, paragraph A, okay? We're going to start with that. And so that's why the fifth point is to go to the passage and read the paragraphs. Okay, so point one is to scan the headings in the box. Point two is to check how many sections you're given. Point three is to look at the paragraphs to see how many you have. Then, you know, point four is to read the items in the box and try to explain them to yourself. And point five now is to read paragraph one. You know, start from A, go to B, and all of that. So let's read this very quickly. Humans have been eating sea turtle eggs and killing adult turtles for meat for millennia. 
However, as human populations exploded and as sea turtles began to confront additional threats, such as intensive fish, fishing, beach development, and climate change, sea turtle populations declined specificiously. Today, all but one of the world's seven species of sea turtles are considered threatened according to the IUCN Red List. And the one that's not, the flat back turtle, is listed as data deficient, which means our entities simply don't know how it's doing. Okay, so they are talking about the dangers that sea turtles experience. Okay, and then you find that with the world, with changes in the world, there are more threats to them. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to get a summary of what we read. And they are, this is practically talking about you see what humans have been doing. Humans kill them and eat them. And then you find that they are exposed to threats. Okay, they're exposed to threats. It says there's seven species. Okay, and then it concludes by saying there's a particular one, the flat back turtle, that is listed as data sufficient. That scientists don't have information about this. So somehow it's, it's talking about the dangers or the threats that this anim these animals or these creatures experience. So that's like what we read the dangers or the threats that these um, animals experience. Now let's go back to, you know, um, what's the, the box. Let's see, dangers, um, dangers, threats that these animals experience. Okay, see, see something here. It says problems facing sea turtles at a global level. Let's go back. Now, exactly what I'm doing now is what you should do. When you have summarized, okay, the next thing you want to do is you want to compare. This one that what you read here and what you are seeing in the box, are you sure they are the same? Now let's come back. It says, as sea turtles began to confront additional threats such as intensive fishing, this and this, sea turtle populations declined prepetitiously. Okay. Today, all but one of the world's this are considered threatened, according to this. So this is what they are facing. Can you see that word threats? Did you see that? And, and you see all but one of the world's seven species. Now it means that all the species in the world except one are threatened. Now, which of the headings seems to be talking about something that has to do with the world? Let's go back. Global. Can you see this word? Global. Problems facing sea turtles at a global level. So you find that they are threatened. They are eating the creation of beach and then climate change. These are all the things that are affecting them. Can you see that the problems are listed? It is not, it doesn't stop at human beings eating them. Human beings eat them, yes. But then there's intensive fishing. There's beach development and there's climate change. Those problems were listed out. That is why you would choose Roman figure four. Because problems, this particular word was now clearly described in the heading. So it's not as if you can see the word problems. The word you can see here is threats, right? So that threat is a, like a synonym for problems in this paragraph. But then the description of the problems now went, you know, it was where they talked about for me, that's number one. And then you have intensive fishing, beach development, climate change. And then this has affected their population. So when you find a paragraph. That paragraph is going to be a detailed breakdown of a particular editing. Are you with me? Are you getting it? Now you're probably saying, do we have all the time to be doing this? Let me tell you the truth. If you do not create the time to do this, you can't get your answers right. And so even though I know you have just, you know, 60 minutes for everything, once you can begin to do this and do it repeatedly, you become faster because you begin to get it right. But I'm taking my time to explain it to you because I want to show you how it is done. Okay, so we have touched on the sixth step. The sixth step, you know, we touched on the sixth and then the seventh and then the eighth step in just what we did now. The, the fifth step was we went to the passage to read. So we read paragraph, paragraph A. The sixth step was we summarize what we read to ourselves. If, you are, if you're holding a book, just when you, when you summarize paragraph A, just use your pencil to write beside that paragraph. You can write somewhere here. Write down what your summary you know, is you can write down what you feel you read, put it down there. Okay. Now, so number seven is you go back to the box, you come back here and say, okay, which one looks like what I read? Which one looks like it? And as we were looking at it, we just found this. We we're looking at something that the sea turtles experienced, and that word was facing. And then we had to confirm the, the problems. We found about four of them, and then we found that it was talking about all the species in the world except one. 
So this is a global level. And so number eight is once you compare and you see, okay, this heading and my paragraph, do they match, do they fit? Number nine is for you to pick your answer. Once you have picked the answer, so we know that for section A, the answer is this number four. So you just use your pencil to cancel the man figure four so that you can know how many you know, headings you have left. So out of seven headings, one is out. Let's go and do the same thing. Let's repeat the process for paragraph B, okay? Paragraph B is a bit longer, but I'm gonna to try to read faster and I hope that you get it, okay? So let's go. One major problem is that every year, millions of sea turtle eggs are illegally taken by poachers for sale on the black market. The situation is particularly serious in Nicaragua, in Central America, which is home for four sea turtle species. Kimu Williams Gillian, who works for conservation body Paso Patipiso, described the poaching of sea turtle tents on nests on the beaches of Nicaragua as uncontrolled, unregulated, extensive, and contested. Even the best protected beaches are plundered to some extent, and it's not uncommon to see poachers digging up nests just meters from tourists watching, watching sea turtles laying their clutch at night, she said. This poaching becomes particularly frenzied during the Aribadas mass lane events where thousands of turtles nest on the same beach for a single night in a biological strategy to overwhelm natural predators. Now it looks like it started by talking about how these people come to steal, okay? And talked about where they steal, where it is happening. So you have four species of sea turtles in this part of Central America. And then there's this person that describes how it is done. She says it is uncontrolled, unregulated, extensive, and contested, okay? So in short, it looks like they're talking about how this stealing is done, how, how it is done, okay? The approach, it looks like, I can see mass lane, it looks like a, a massive or a plenty, you know, there's something about it that looks like the description of how it is done. So while we're trying to summarize, let's go back to the box. Let's go back to the box. Let's see which one looks like the process of stealing in one place, because she gave us a particular location. So process of stealing, process of stealing, process of stealing, process of stealing, process of stealing. Okay, we can see one location here. Yeah. yeah, one location. And yes, she, we're talking about Nicaragua in Central America. So this is one, oh, sorry, sorry, I, I moved it up too much, okay? So this is one location. This is one place, home to four, yeah, okay? So we have that part of the heading. It says Nicaragua in Central America, okay? So we have that part. And then it says intensive and large-scale poaching. So it means that they, they, they have, they do something that is broad. They do a massive stealing, okay? Do you get my description? Now, how do we find that massive? We need to see how she said she described the poaching of sea turtle nests as uncontrolled. Now, these are some words that give you an idea of how well they steal well. It is uncontrolled, it means that they do it without barriers, unregulated. It is, it is easy for them. Nobody checks them extensive. They cover a large area and contested. It is something that everybody is open to. So it means it is broad. That's is beginning to look like large scale in my mind, okay? And then he says, even the best beaches are plundered. It is still stealing to some extent. And then you see poachers digging up nests, just meters from this, laying their clutch at night. Somehow you see, it is, it is giving us an explanation of how well these people steal well. Now it says it becomes particularly frenzied during this period when the thousands of total nests on the same beach for a single night in a biological strategy to overwhelm natural predators. So what, what happens is that when the sea turtles come and lay on the beach, all of them are trying to um, protect themselves from natural, natural predators. You now find that these human beings, these thieves, eventually are able to steal them easily, effortlessly. Doesn't that look like that heading that we are looking at? It looks like intensive and large scale poaching. We already found one location. So you know that this is Nicaragua in Central America. Then you now found intensive and large scale. It means that this is a, a kind of stealing that covers a wide area because that's, look, that's what we read. So if you cannot read the paragraph, break it down and understand it, it might be a problem. You need to be able to do this. It's just that you need to do it faster because you're going to be in, ex in the exam setting. Excuse me. So you need to be able to be faster, to find your answers faster, 
Okay, for someone like me, I don't need to read every single word before I understand what is being talked about. But I'm breaking it down for you so that you can understand. So your answer for romance for you know section B is Roman figure six intensive and large scale coaching in one location. So once you pick this from a figure six for section B, make sure you cancel it out so that you know that you are left with five more headings. Okay, so let's do C. Even with armed guards, the numbers of coaches overwhelm military personnel by 10 or 20 to one. Um, Williams Gillen said, although many coaches are locals with limited resources, during these Aribadas, there are influxes of gangs of poachers from larger cities outside local communities. These are not just local poor people with other options, but to protect the country's sea turtles. Williams Gillen said conservationists shouldn't just depend on catching low level of, ah, can you imagine? I can hear the answer to this in my head. <laughs> there are times like that when you remember something you read. See, you know, there was a part that talked about don't just catch them alone. See it here. It says, William Gillen said conversation, conservationists shouldn't de just depend on catching low level of craters. If one poacher decides to stop, another one will just step into his space. We need to know more about the middlemen and people higher up in the distribution chain. I found my answer already. I don't know if you have. There was a part in the editing that talked about don't, it's not enough to just catch them. Do you remember that part? Let's go back to the box and look at it. See, can you see this romantic or seven? Why catching the poachers may not solve the problem. Exactly. Because that's what they're saying. Yeah, you just need one sentence. And that one sentence is William Gillen said conservationists shouldn't just depend on catching low level operators. And what he's trying to say here is if you catch one person, if one person stops, another person will continue. So you really want to know the people that they are going to give those eggs to. You want to know the destination of those eggs, okay? And so honestly, you don't need any you know, story. Your answer is Roman figure seven. Your answer for section C is Roman figure seven. Was that clear? That This one just, this answer screamed at me. Did it scream at you as well? It was easy to find because it was giving us a reason why you know, catching them is not enough. So let's go on to D, okay? Passive artificial solution is the creation of high-tech sea turtle eggs. Fake eggs convincingly crafted to look like the real thing. But eesh, let's hold on there. Do you remember an ad in where they talked about something looking real? Do you, do you remember? That's, this is the way it falls on me. When you read a paragraph, if you have summarized the editing to yourself beforehand, as you are reading, you will just, your brain will just find the answer. Okay, so let me take that again so that we digest it. Paso Pacifico solution is the creation of high tech sea turtle eggs, fake eggs, convincingly crafted, made to look like the real thing. If I were you, I would not bother reading anything else again because I know I found the answer. But I would not encourage you to do that. I want you to be sure. I want you to be positive that your answer is correct. So let's quickly digest it. These have the potential to reveal the destination market for trafficked sea turtle eggs, making convincing sea turtle eggs. Can you see the reiterating? Let me just go and show you the answer. Mm? Let me show you. Developing an item that appears true to life. Did you remember that word crafted? Looks like fake eggs. All of those words are describing your answer to you. But let's complete the reading, okay? Making convincing sea turtle eggs is not easy. And Paso Pacifico is still working on perfecting a prototype. In particular, it's proven quite problematic to create the right texture since sea turtle eggs are not covered in a hard shell like those of birds, but are quite flexible. So Paso Pacifico brought in, I'm not even sure I'm pronouncing that name right, but no problem, brought in Lauren Wilde, a special effects artist in the US to create a convincing outer shell. You see, they are describing now they are making something that is fake, that's not real. First, Wild had to get her hands on the real thing. Since it's illegal to send sea turtle eggs over the border, Wild is using land turtle eggs from California. It was really eye-opening and important for me to feel these eggs and how the shell bends a little, she said. To get the GPS device inside the shell, Paso Pacifico is using 3D printers to make a plastic ball, which will then have a GPS transmitter fitted inside. This will take the place of the embryo inside the shell. Lastly, the fake shells will be sealed with silicon. Waterproofing them. What else do you need? That's your answer. 
This is they're describing the process. Yeah, Bobo, hold on. Okay. They're describing the process of developing an item that appears true to life. Your answer for that one is Roman figure one. You know, you found it from the first sentence. And we just had to read it to get the complete description. Okay, to get the complete description. Please hold on. I'll soon be through. Okay, so my son is up, but I'm going to complete this with you. We're going to do E and F before I go. All right, so let's read E very quickly. So you know that you've picked Roman figure. So we have picked, which ones have we picked? Okay, we have picked um, Roman figure one. We have picked Roman figure four. We have picked Roman figure six and Roman figure seven. So they should be canceled. If you're using a book, you should use your pencil to cancel them out. So we should have three paragraphs left. And um, two paragraphs left, rather, and then three headings. So we have Roman figure two, extending the project to other endangered species. We have Roman figure three, a short but intensive investigation with longer term follow up. And then we have Roman figure five, collection of eggs and their possible unknown roots. But of course, you know, we don't need one of them. Okay, so let's do this very quickly before <laughs> it gets really busy here. Sea turtles, on average, lay around 100 eggs in a nest. And once the fake eggs are finished, they will be slipped in with the real ones. Williams Greenland said it might even be possible to deliver fake eggs into nests while poachers are at work. Wary of tourists, poachers will often back off if strangers come near and then return when they have gone. It will be pretty easy to drop an egg in the dark into a nest they have been digging up, she said. Once the poacher picks up the fake egg along with the real ones, conservationists and law enforcement and um, agent to be able to track them. Experts believe most of the stolen eggs eventually make their way out of Nicaragua, possibly to El Salvador or Guatemala. However, there is also growing concern that sea turtle eggs from Central America are actually heading to the US. Why does this sound like they're telling us where the eggs are you know, most likely going, where they're gonna take them to? Let's complete it. From where they are sold on to other countries around the world. It looks like a description of where the eggs will go after they have been stolen. Okay, so let's go to the box and see if there's, there was something like that. Yeah, can you see this one? Collection of eggs and their possible onward roots. Okay, so this second part I found easily because you found it in the second part where they were saying, experts believe it will go, for, go out of Nicaragua to possibly, now do you see this word? In the, in the box of Eddings, we had possible onward roots where they will go to afterwards. So well, yeah, we have possibly to El Salvador or Guatemala, However, there's also growing concern that sea turtles from Central America are actually heading to the USA from where they are sold on to other countries. That's what this part, this second part of the of E is talking about their, their destination. While the initial part looks at how they are taking, okay, it says that you know, poachers will, if, if people come there, you know, if if um if if poachers are not aware, right? You know, or when they are not aware, yeah. the eggs can be dropped in the nests that they have been digging. Okay, but of course, these same poachers will be would not be open to seeing tourists come around them. Okay, so it will be possible to deliver fake eggs when they are at work. Okay, so and of course, anybody who is stealing, once the person sees that somebody is looking at them, the person will be suspicious, right? And so we just you know probably um, you know go away. So while they are at the point of stealing while they are stealing or while they have come to steal, you can step in, drop the fake eggs and go. And then they would not know because they were already digging. And so they would think it's a real egg and they would take it. So this gives us the description of how the eggs are collected. And then this tells us how the eggs find their way to different places. So if I were you, my answer would be Roman figure five, yay. Okay, so we've got 25 answers right. For paragraphs A, B, C, D, E, we have just paragraph F left. And so the two headings that are left are Roman figure two and Roman figure three, okay? Roman figure two and three are left. And of course, ah. you know that we don't need one of them. So let's read paragraph F very quickly and then get our answer. To date, Paso Pacifico has yet to put a single fake egg in a nest. But Williams Gillen said she isn't too concerned that publicity is for their yeah, schemes with resulting poachers looking for the eggs. The vast majority of the poaching is happening at night, so already it is hard to tell the eggs apart. And at this time, poachers and middlemen are not closely inspecting eggs, but rather shoving them into a sack as quickly as possible. Of course, poachers will eventually become aware of the prospect of fake eggs among the real ones, especially when customers try to bite into an egg and break their teeth on the GPS transmitter inside. So Pato Pacifico plans to do a 
massive deployment of as many fakes as possible to gather a lot of data before poachers get wise. Knowing where the eggs will go, knowing where the eggs go will allow conservationists and law con yeah, conservationists and law enforcement agents to focus their resources on the right places, whether it be through awareness building campaigns or crackdowns on illegal settlers. And eventually, Paso Pacifiso hopes to share the technology with interested parties along the world. Why does it feel like I don't understand what I read? <laughs> Maybe because it was longer, you probably feel the same way. But I think they're talking about um, how, how this process of you know, tracking the poachers would work. Okay, of course, they say they haven't started. And um, you know, she isn't too concerned about the publicity for their scheme, yeah, for their scheme will result in poachers looking for the eggs. Okay. Now, what are they interested in? I'm going to try to read this again to understand it because I can tell you I didn't really get it. And it's possible that that same thing will happen to you. So if you have enough time to do it, then you can. Okay, so let's do this very quickly. The vast majority of this is happening at night. So blah, blah, blah. They will eventually will become aware. Okay, so this is sounding like, um, this is something like a solution that will last for a while. Okay, let's see. Let's go back to the box. We're just going to choose at this point. We just want to do mini, mini, many more. Or I think it's any, mini, many more. Yeah. So let's do, we have just two and three. So it's extending the project to other endangered species. It doesn't sound like that. It doesn't sound like they're, they're making something broad. Now, but this one says a short but intensive investigation. Yeah, it sounds like that. It looks like they're trying to do something that will lead to something and then something later on. It's looking like long-term follow-up. Let me not lie to you. Even if you get to a paragraph and you don't fully get it, because you are left with just two options, you can easily eliminate the one that doesn't sound like it. I don't want to waste time trying to understand this because really, you really shouldn't waste time trying to understand everything. But at this point, between Roman figure two and three, this one looks more like an investigation. And that's why, did you see the part where they talked about law enforcement um, agencies? Where is it? Um, yeah, can you see this? Will allow conservationists and law enforcement agents. Obviously, this looks like a, a process of investigation. And so our answer for paragraph F is Roman figure three. So the only the only heading we did not use is Roman figure two because there was no paragraph that said anything about extending the project to other endangered species. Okay, so when you get to a point where your brain, you know, is just not getting it, just use the elimination method and be sure that you're getting it right. And so your answers are complete. Yay. Okay, so that's it for matching Eddings. Honestly, I think I enjoyed doing this with you and I hope you enjoyed learning with me. Very quickly, I'm going to recount the steps that you should follow. Okay, the first thing is for you to scan the Eddings in the box to see how many you have. The next thing is to go and see how many paragraphs, you know, look down to see how many sections you have, right? In this case, they gave us six. In the Eddings, we add seven, but for the, for the paragraphs, we have six. So we know that one is not necessary, right? The third thing, number three, is for you to see how many paragraphs you have. So you just go down and you look at them, look at the paragraphs, right? Number four is for you to go back to the headings and then try to understand them one by one. And if you have to underline some words, make sure that you do. Tip number five is for you to go back to the passage and read the paragraphs one by one. So you start, we started with paragraph A and then to paragraph B and then C and D and E and F till we got our answers. But as we were reading each paragraph, we were doing the following things. You start by summarizing. You go back to the box to see what looks like a summary. And then you compare. Is this what my paragraph said? Is this what the adding the adding is saying? And then you pick your answer, which is number nine. And finally, number 10, just as it happened to us, even though we weren't sure of the F, we came back to the box and compared, is it Roman figure two or Roman figure three? You know, and then we're able to pick the answer. If it happens that there's still a section G after it, just pick a temporary answer. When you've gotten the answer, that's pick a temporary answer for section F. Once you've gotten the answer to section G, then you can come back to section F, okay? This is all you need to get your answers right for matching headings. And of course, get your, you know, band nine in the entire IELTS reading because it's possible, it's doable, you can achieve it, okay? So I hope you learned, I hope you enjoyed this. If you loved this video, please like it. And um, I'd like to read your comments as well. Let me know, did you find this easy? Did you enjoy it? Did you learn? Please leave a comment. Tell me what you loved about the process. I'd love you to share this video as well. Do you know anybody, two people, three people that are preparing for the IELTS test? Please share this video with them so that they can learn. So many people have been reaching out to me 
in the past weeks asking me, you know, to explain matching headings, you know, reading to them, that's in the reading test to them. So I hope that this video um, serves that purpose. Then um, there are a number of links in my description. If you want to download the free ebook to my IELTS writing for academic, you find the link. And then for, for general training, you find the link as well. And you know that um, I created an online preparation course for the IELTS where you can watch video lessons on your phone. You can download the PDF and other resources. You get to join a Telegram group where I nurture you alongside other test takers. Right now, I have about 32 people you know, um, taking the course and you have access till September. So if you're interested in that, please click the link in my description box. It comes with two free evaluations for your writing. So you get, if you're taking academic, you get two evaluations for reports. That's the first task one. And then two evaluations for essays. And if you're taking the general training, two evaluations for task one, which is the letter, and then two evaluations for task two, which is the essay. And you also get extra 30 minutes for free speaking evaluation. I would test you on a complete test and I would give you feedback that you can work with to improve. So make sure you click the link in my description box if you want to take that as well. And if you want a mock test for IELTS, make sure you visit takeielts.net. I'll provide you my referral link so you can get a 25% discount of that as well. And there's also Candor, try Candor. It's a Grammarly version for speaking where you can record into the phone or your, you know, your system, and then you will get feedback for the four criteria in speaking, and of course, an overall band score. And then you get tips to help you improve. Once again, if you have not subscribed to my video, that's to my channel, my YouTube channel, please make sure you do that right now. I think I'm, <laughs> my son's voice is getting into my head. So that's it for me to you. Once again, my name is Adeni Kebabalola. I'm the brain behind IELTS with AB. Know that you can follow me on Facebook, on Instagram, and on um, you know, right here on YouTube. You'll find me also on LinkedIn. I'll provide all my links in my description box. Thank you once again. See you in my next video. Bye-bye.